Honourable Mr. Moderator and Honourable Members of the uh, Catalan National Assembly, I bring you greetings from UNPO and I also bring you greetings from my country, the Republic of Somaliland. Ladies and gentlemen, there must have been uh, uh, briefings uh, distributed to you and the introductions that were made a little earlier. But I wish to share with you my conviction, my belief, that there is an international conspiracy against my country, Somaliland. And why do I say this? I say this because I believe a country can only be born once. We were always, we were all born just once. We cannot be born twice. I say this because my country, Somaliland, which was formerly the British Somaliland Protectorate since 1884, gained its independence on the 26th of June, 1960. <clears throat> and to differentiate between our neighbors in the Horn of Africa, because we have five different countries inhabited by Somalis. You have the Republic of Djibouti, which was La Côte Française de Somalie. You have British Somaliland Protectorate in green. And then to our east, you have La, La Somalia Italiana, which is the Somalia of today that you all know about. Then there's the Somali region in Ethiopia. And then there's the northern part of Kenya. So there are five Somali nations in the Horn of Africa. Because our names are similar. Somali region of Ethiopia, Somali region of Kenya, Somali region of... But it's like North Africa. If we had different names, there wouldn't be any confusion. You have Morocco, an Arab country. You have Tunisia, an Arab country. Algeria, an Arab country. Egypt, an Arab country. So being all Somalis doesn't necessarily mean that we should all be just one, have one identity. And then what is interesting is that my country, the former British Somaliland Protectorate, was the first of the five Somalis to become independent on that date that I gave you, 26 June. That gives my country legitimacy and legality. Our, in, our independence came through a legal process and uh, uh, agreements with our former partners, Britain, some, uh, Britain, that gave us our independence. And when Somaliland became independent on that date, we became the 12th African country to become independent. And 42 African countries today sitting in the African Union were still under colonial rule, including a neighbor, former Italian Somalia, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Algeria, and so on. 42 countries were still under colonial rule when my country, Somaliland, was independent. But the paradox is those countries that gained independence after we did are today sitting in the African Union and denying Somaliland our right to our rightful identity and to our existence. This is totally unjust because the African Union knows fully well because it sent observers 
the AU is fully aware that Somaliland fully entirely lives within the territory that was formerly British Somaliland protectorate. We did not change our situation, our place, our name. We are the same. But in spite of that injustice and in spite of that conspiracy that has gone on for 32 years against my country, we continue to, be, to remain committed to the peace and stability of the region. We have unreserved respect for the unity and territorial integrity of nations and states. And we do not believe in the fragmentation of Africa, nor do we call for the revision of Africa's borders. For these reasons, allowing Somalia to claim ownership over Somaliland is totally immoral, when in fact it was Somaliland that, was, that first became independent it was Somaliland that secured membership with the United Nations before we united with Somalia. It is Somaliland that has been living within its internationally defined borders. And it is Somaliland that has been stable and peaceful for the past 32 years, when Somalia entity of being the most unstable, <clears throat> and failed state. We therefore claim full ownership of our name, our identity, our language, our culture, our tradition, and of course, our sovereignty. Ladies and gentlemen, withdrawing from a failed union with Somalia, and we withdrew from that failed state when we had a war. In, in that picture, you will see tanks. Our country was littered with military hardware, MiGs and tanks and cannons. And what do cannons do? There's horrible massacres, there's pictures. This is the contents of just one single mass grave. And it contains the remains of children, of babies, two and three and five year old, the skulls are so small that many of them disintegrated. What is the military value of putting children into mass graves? I guess somebody needed to do that and I can't understand why. We are not, with Somalia does not make us the first independent African country to have entered into a voluntary union with another and then withdrawn from that union intact. Egypt and Syria have done so. Senegal and Gambia, and Senegal and Mali, all have done likewise, but have never been punished for going into a union, nor for withdrawing from it. But Somaliland has been punished for 32 years. In that picture, you will see a hospital. Who bombs hospitals? Who bombs homes and civilian dwellings? Who puts airplanes in the air just to bomb a, a city full of civilians? And of course, every mother thinks her baby is the most beautiful, and I have a picture of my hospital there where I have lived for the past 25 years and where we have delivered 32 babies. But I will go on with my lecture. Unlike Somalia, we need no peacekeeping forces because we keep our own country peaceful in Somaliland. We established political parties. We have held a series of parliamentary and presidential elections, all witnessed by international observers who saw how every citizen of Somaliland over the years, over the age of 18, have lined up to cast their votes. Somalia, who is recognized by the international community, has been unable to hold even one election. One minute, oh my God, please, I must run. 
I'm, I'm, I'm late. I'm, I'm old. I'm 85. I need time. And I've come a long way, so please don't choke me. Um, pictures there. You see a goat. That's how they left our hospitals. And I think we'll keep the pictures of that. Unlike Somalia, we need no peacekeeping forces, but we have elections. Now, while the international world spends billions of dollars on Somalia, we in Somaliland have our own currency. We generate our own resources to defend our country and train and run our army and police. We rely, rely on ourselves to manage our government, establish our, our courts, have free and independent press, and provide health and social services all free of charge, as well as education to boys and girls. Somaliland has built a country founded on peace, justice, and the rule of law. Now, the future of Somaliland is bright, and although our peace and stability have been threatened in recent months by terrorists and Shabab from the breakaway region of Puntland next door, we are exercising restraint and keeping cool heads in order not to tarnish a long track record of good relations with neighboring countries. Our growing trade and economy are also cornerstones of our foreign policy. We promote and we seek more stable and democratic, peaceful and prosperous Horn of Africa. Because Somaliland has never been part of Africa's problems, we hope that the world will begin to listen to us and give justice to our people who have a right to be heard, a right to be seen, a right to be recognized as a responsible members of the international community. And ladies and gentlemen, Somaliland has been unjustly punished for the sins of others for far too long. For reasons unknown to us, Somalia, who has been the cause of our destruction, has been given the authority to represent us. When, in fact, we separated from Somalia far longer than we have been united. And where, we wonder, in the world, has the aggressor ever been given the authority to represent the victim. The world should see that Somaliland has the political maturity and the wisdom that the world needs to help bring peace to neighboring Somalia. The world needs Somaliland to be part of that, of the nations who are genuinely searching for solutions to the problems of Somalia. Somaliland is willing and ready for that responsibility. The case of Somaliland must be given a hearing and its day in court, so that at last peace will prevail, because there is no reunification ever possible between Somaliland and Somalia. Just as we have done all along, we in Somaliland continue to extend a hand of friendship to Somalia, to initiate serious dialogue, to find a peaceful solution to our differences, so that our people may a serious dialogue to find a peaceful solution to our differences, so that our people may at last find peace and stability on our common border, on both sides of our common border. If we had peace, we could join our efforts to address our common problems caused by drought, food insecurity, and malnutrition, and our resources would become better used to prevent and treat the diseases that are killing our people. If peace is found, we would better educate our youth, create jobs for them, and prevent them from being trafficked to Europe and beyond, only to drown in foreign seas or in foreign prisons. Ladies and gentlemen, I sincerely hope and pray that wisdom will prevail soon so that peace and stability may one day return to the Horn of Africa. And thank you for your, for your attention and your hospitality. Thank you. Thank you.